SSD is a framework that makes it easy to build modern full stack applications on your own infrastructure. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the key concepts and how it can fit into your workflow. To help with this, we have a doc on our site called What is SSD? And I'm going to walk through at a very high level what this covers. To start with, as I'd mentioned, it helps you build applications on your own infrastructure. This is important because the apps and the resources that you're creating get deployed to your cloud provider account, whether that's AWS, Cloudflare, or the over 150 providers that we support. Later in the video, I'll talk about how we support so many, but in effect, what you would need to know is that this is not being deployed to our infrastructure, it's actually being deployed to your own cloud provider. What makes SSD different is that everything in your app is defined in code. So this isn't just your front end or your API, but it's also harder pieces of infrastructure like your databases, any buckets, queues, or even Stripe webhooks. So essentially everything that your application needs as a whole gets defined in code in a single ssd.config.ts file. And that allows SSD to automate pretty much everything that your app needs. So the creation of those resources, managing them, modifying them, and at some point removing them as well. Let's look at some code to get started. So here we have a few lines of code that define a Next.js app. In this case, it's using something called ssd.aws. So as you might guess, this is going into your AWS account. You can configure a domain for your Next.js app. Or if you're not using Next.js and you're using something like Remix or Astro, Svelte, Solid Start, SSD has support for almost all of the major front ends. Now, once you've got your front end, you probably have your back end as well. Maybe your back end is an Express app that is deployed as a container. In this case, you can define your application, your Express application, and SSD will deploy it to a Fargate ECS cluster. We can also create a RDS Postgres database or a Redis cluster, an S3 bucket, or a cron job. You specify the schedule of your cron job and the function that'll be called at that rate. You can also add your Stripe webhooks. We have a much larger list of components in our docs that you can check out. But these components that we looked at, they are a way of defining your infrastructure that your application needs. And you can use that to basically define any piece of your application or any feature of your application. The key thing to note here is that you don't need to use the AWS console. This is useful because in the past, you might have created, let's say, an S3 bucket, and you might have clicked around in the AWS console to create it. You might have had to modify it at some point or delete it. 
in this case, SSD does all of that for you without you having to touch the AWS console. So you define it in code, run a bunch of commands, something that we'll look at, and SSD does the rest. Most of these components come with sensible defaults. So the Next.js example or the front-end example that we had looked at before was assuming that your front-end was in the root of your project. But there are ways you can configure things. So in this example, we're looking at a Lambda function that has a handler. But you can configure things like the timeout or the memory, something that in the past you might have used the AWS console for. Most common properties like the timeout or the memory in this case are lifted as top level props as we call them for your component. But there might be cases where you might want to configure some far lower level resources that SSD is creating. Maybe you're a part of an enterprise team and you need to configure the IAM role that this function is going to be using. And you can do that through something called the transform. So SSD's components in turn create a bunch of different low level resources and the transform basically gives you access to that even if those properties aren't lifted to the top level. And this ends up being really helpful as your application tends to grow in complexity or you have very specific security requirements that come in and you have to accommodate for them. The components that we've looked at so far are deployed to AWS. And in this case, AWS is what we would call a provider. We have built-in components for AWS and Cloudflare, but we also have support for a much broader ecosystem of Plumi or Terraform providers. And these are the 150 odd providers that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So in this case, or an example here would be, you can use Vercel to create, you can use a Vercel provider to create a project through code essentially. Once you've added a couple of these components or resources, it makes sense to be able to use them together. This is what SSD helps you do. Let's say you've got a bucket and you would like to upload files to that bucket in your Next.js app. With SSD, you can just say that you would want to link the two resources together. And now SSD will go in create the necessary IAM permissions in this case, because it's going to AWS for your Next.js app to access that bucket. And you also get an SDK that you can use in your Next.js app to reference that resource that you just created and linked. So in this case, I have access to the bucket name. I don't have to hard code this. This is really useful because in the past you might have created this bucket in the AWS console, copied the bucket name, stored that in a .n file in your Next.js app, effectively hard coding it, but also having to manage it when you're trying to deploy, let's say your Next.js app to another environment. Maybe now you have to go in and create another bucket and copy the name of that bucket as well. So SSD saves you a lot of that by just having you link the resources together and then just referencing it through the SDK. We've looked at a few different files here, and so it's helpful to maybe take a step back and look at the project structure. So far, we've essentially seen what is known as drop-in mode. In this case, you've got an XJS app or you've got a front-end and you're just trying to deploy that. And so what you can do is you can put your SSD config right in the middle of it. 
and it'll manage that deployment for you. But most likely if you're working on something for work, you are probably dealing with front ends, a different back end. Maybe you've got some other services that you need to sort of manage. Maybe you've got some functions that run on the side. And so you're probably using a mono repo of some sort. And in this case, SSD can also run in that by being able to reference the specific packages in your mono repo. We've got a separate doc on the mono repo setup and a starter project to get you started. To make this all work, we've got a CLI. You install the CLI locally if you're using Node, globally if you're using a different language. The main thing the CLI sort of helps with is bringing up your development environment and deploying your app. So to bring up your development environment, you run SSD dev, and this does a few interesting things. One, it runs your app in dev mode and brings up a multiplexer, which is a fancy way of saying that it runs a bunch of different processes together in the same terminal UI. So one of the processes it runs is a watcher. So this would watch for any changes in your SSD config and it'll deploy those changes. So every time, let's say you make a change, let's say you create a new bucket or you link the bucket to your Next.js app, those changes get deployed. It also runs your functions live, which is it will deploy a proxy version of your Lambda function and route those requests to your local machine, which allows you to test any changes that you want to make on these Lambda functions without having to redeploy them, which is really helpful. If you have any resources inside of VPC, it also creates a tunnel between your local machine and that VPC, effectively allowing your local machine access to these resources. Finally, it starts your front end and container services in dev mode. So if you've got your Express app, it runs that locally. And thanks to the tunnel, your Express app now has access to those resources and also loads up any links that you might have. So again, with the bucket example that we had previously, you have access to that bucket in your Express app that's running locally. And then to deploy your application, you just run SSD deploy. You can pass in a stage. So in this case, I'm passing in a stage called production. These stage names are just ways to namespace your resources. So it allows you to create multiple of them. So you've got a dev version, or if you're creating a pull request, you can create a preview environment from that pull request. Finally, we have a dashboard called the SSD console that helps you manage your applications. It can connect to your AWS account, show you all the SSD apps in that account. You can configure Git push to deploy, so you can create preview environments, or you can view your logs from your applications or monitor any issues that come up from them. And that's about it. We've got a FAQ at the bottom that you can check out as well. But I hope this was helpful.